This is Mona Simpson. She was Homer's mother, Abe's wife, and one groovy lady. Although her marriage to Abe was an extremely rocky one, she was a very positive influence on young Homer's life. She became interested in activism, and after a mishap at Mr. Burns' laboratory, was forced to leave her family and go into hiding. Years later, she returned to Homer on two occasions, but had to leave him again in the end. She returned for a third time, and after an argument with her son, passed away unexpectedly. She continues to visit Homer in his dreams to this very day. This is the history of Mona Simpson. Oof, this is going to be a rough one. Just gonna warn you in advance. Mona Simpson is one of those characters without many actual appearances, but is a pretty major figure in the Simpsons family canon. She's Homer's mother, after all. We've seen how Bart, Lisa, and Maggie's lives are positively affected by Marge. Obviously, Mona made a significant mark on Homer's life, especially considering she had to leave him. So let's take a closer look at the details. Let's see if we can figure out who Mona Simpson actually was and what her legacy is on this series. In the first six seasons, Mona is a fairly mysterious figure. She's mentioned in There's No Disgrace Like Home in Season 1, how she would tell Homer he's a big disappointment. In Season 2, she had her first on-screen appearance, although voiced by Maggie Roswell. When Homer is born, she tells Abe to never tell Homer about his half-brother, because she wants him to respect his father. Then we see her again in a Season 6 flashback, when Homer and Grandpa visit their old farm. We see how supportive she is of her son, thinking he could be president someday. It's clear the writers hadn't mapped out a specific characterization or plan for her early on. Like the Mona we all know would never call Homer a disappointment. But it did set the foundation for some of her themes. Her good relationship with Homer, her marital issues with Abe, and their tendency to shield their son from any unpleasant truths. As we all know, Mona Simpson's big coming out episode was in Season 7's Mother Simpson. Glenn Close took over the role, continuing to do so in almost all future appearances. Honestly, this is the real starting point for her character, as basically every later episode ties back to this one in some way. Back in the 1960s, Mona and Homer had a strong, loving connection, whereas Abe was relatively aloof and disinterested. But it's Joe Namath's hair that changed everything. It opened her eyes to the rebellious freedom of the 1960s, and she eventually joined up with a group of hippies. They detonated an antibiotic bomb at Mr. Burns' germ warfare laboratory, killing all of his precious germs. Also, they cured Chief Wiggum's asthma. After Mr. Burns gets trampled, Mona, being the kind-hearted person she is, went back to help him. She's identified by Burns, and her face is plastered all over the news. In the middle of the night, Mona tearfully says goodbye to her son, before going into hiding. At this point, there isn't very much personal angst between Homer and his mother. He does momentarily question whether he just wasn't lovable as a son, but family conflict is not the point of this episode. Once she explains what happened, Homer is overjoyed to have her back in his life. Mona's relationship with Grandpa is still icy cold, as he lashes out for leaving him to raise Homer by himself. But don't worry, he still wants to have sex. Mona relates very well to her grandchildren, sharing common interests with all three of them. In the end, she has to go back into hiding after Mr. Burns unexpectedly identifies her. She tells Homer that she'll never forget him, and that Homer will always be a part of her. Cue the waterworks. Overall, Mother Simpson did a great job of properly introducing Mona and giving Homer some closure. But also leaving things open-ended enough if the writers ever wanted to revisit things. In Season 10, we take a brief detour into Mona's life with the hippie movement. We find out that Mona took her family to the original Woodstock. It's abundantly clear that she and Abe have different parenting styles, with Mona wanting Homer to live free and express himself. It's also clear they have different infidelity styles. Grandpa paid for sex back in the day, whereas Mona was into free love and all that stuff. Seth and Munchie describe her as a demon in the sack. Grandpa is too stupid to understand the implication. Mona's early storylines were slightly more expository and plot-driven in nature. They were more focused on explaining what she's been doing and tying up loose ends with Mr. Burns. Season 15's My Mother the Carjacker is a good example of this, serving as a direct sequel to Mother Simpson. Mona misses her son, so she plants secret messages in the newspaper for him to find her. Homer is, once again, overjoyed to see her. Still very little angst between them. 
We even get a lengthier montage of Homer reliving his childhood with her. Here he takes much more of a protective stance. When running from the police, he swears on Mona's grave that they will never find her. Which is really, really unfortunate, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Homer makes an emotional plea to the jury during her trial, and they decide to acquit. Honestly, this episode is a ridiculous tease, basically designed to toy with Homer's emotions as much as possible. Mr. Burns transforms his old germ warfare lab into a museum in Mona's name. But it turns out this was a big sting operation, and Mona is arrested on a legal technicality. It's honestly kind of dumb. But it does set up for an excellent climax. Homer hijacks Mona's prison bus, planning on going into hiding with her. However, Mona acknowledges this means Homer will be leaving his kids behind, thereby repeating this vicious cycle. So she tases him and throws him out the window. And Homer has to watch in horror as she drives the bus into a river, resulting in a fiery explosion. But don't worry, Mona jumped out of the bus in the nick of time. Yeah, like I said, this episode really twists with Homer's emotions. He ends up clinging to the fact that they never found her body, and keeps searching the newspaper clues that she's okay. There is still something unresolved with Homer, but the story ultimately ends on an optimistic note. In season 17, we take another detour into Mona and Abe's personal life. We find out that Mona had an affair with a lifeguard back in the 1960s, around the time that Homer was conceived. This results in a paternity crisis for Homer, but luckily, or unluckily for him, it turns out that Grandpa is the father. Season 19's Mona Leaves a is the big turning point in the Mona Simpson storyline. Here is where we start shifting away from the Mr. Burns stuff and more toward the family drama with Homer and Abe. Mona returns to the family now that the police are no longer looking for her. However, at this point, Homer is wary of her. His emotions have been jerked around every time she reappears. This is honestly a jarring shift from the hopeful ending from the last one, but it does make sense that Homer would be worried about being hurt again, wouldn't you? And he's only initially cold to her, he almost immediately tries to fix things. Unfortunately, Homer is too late, and Mona passed away during the night. <sighs> Homer just can't catch a break in this video. Sorry buddy. In her will, she leaves him instructions to climb this big mountain and spread her ashes at 3 p.m. Through sheer determination, Homer manages this feat. Her ashes float downward and clogs up this missile guidance system in Mr. Burns' secret facility. Even death won't stop her from foiling Mr. Burns. Homer is annoyed that he ended up in another one of her schemes, but ends up coming around later when he finds out how evil Mr. Burns' plans actually are. The whole thing is this James Bond parody, where Mona's innocuous gifts to the family ends up saving the day. This episode suggests that Homer's addiction to food was caused by Mona constantly leaving to go protest and stuff. However, at the very end, they imply that little Homer always had a sweet tooth, and maybe it's not Mona's fault. We'll see about that. The later seasons were much more interested in studying the more traumatic aspects of Homer's childhood specifically the dysfunction between Mona and Abe, and the resulting psychological damage done to their son. You thought Mona's death was sad? Well, that's barely the tip of this sad iceberg. First, we have season 23's How I Wet Your Mother, in which Homer unexpectedly starts wetting the bed every night. To figure out why, the Simpson family journeys into Homer's dreams using Professor Frink's invention. Inception ensues. In the lowest level of Homer's dreams, Mona reveals herself as death. She shows him a repressed memory of going on a fishing trip when Homer was a child. While fishing, Homer tells his father that he heard them yelling at each other. Homer then capsizes the boat, and they return with no fish. Mona ended up leaving them a few weeks after this incident. Basically, Homer associated these events together, and felt a sense of guilt that these bad moments are what caused Mona to leave them. Mona assures him that this wasn't the case. That what this event really demonstrated was that, when she was forced to leave, that she knew Homer would be in good hands. She tells him, shortly before the dream collapses, that the three of them will always be together in his memories. It's somewhat questionable why Homer would feel guilty about Mona leaving when he found out the real reason back in Season 7. He knows about Mr. Burns, why would he think it was this fishing trip? But then again, the subconscious works in weird, irrational ways. 
This episode served as a way to close the book on any of Homer's unresolved guilt. From season 25 onward, once per season, the writers would revisit Mona and Abe's life together. In season 25, Homer is fascinated by fireworks because it was the one night he couldn't hear his parents fighting. Mona wants to take some classes, but Abe won't allow it. Then later, she's gone, and Homer looks at the fireworks guy as his personal hero. In season 26, we find out how Mona and Abe originally met in the 1950s. Abe was working in the Air Force, and Mona as a cocktail waitress nearby, going by the name Sunny. Abe basically steals an experimental plane in some strange attempt to impress her. Or else because of the LSD. But either way, he asks Mona to marry him, and she tells him to shut up and kiss him. Because she's tired of listening to his voice. Geez, did Mona ever really love Abe? Season 27 doubles down on the grandpa side of the story. The retirement castle is giving them drugs that makes them hallucinate their loved ones. Here comes Mona. This is an idealized version created by Grandpa's subconscious, one who insists that she will never leave him. Grandpa continues taking these hallucinogens because he wants to stay forever in this happy moment with Mona. Then he changes her into Betty Boop. This is one of the rare glimpses where we find out how much Mona's memory haunts Grandpa. That even though they didn't have the best relationship, Mona's absence really did affect him. In season 28, Homer falls in love with this chili dog Stan. Grandpa tells him that they used to take him there every Wednesday, while he and Mona would go to marriage counseling. Mona and Abe would fight constantly in the car, and Homer was visibly upset by it. I mean, he can still hear them argue from the chili dog stand. Come on, guys. Homer ultimately concludes that he must have been eating his emotions. The very next season, in Forgiven Regret, they revisit this food dynamic. Little Homer is bothering Abe, so he's sent upstairs with Mona to bake pies with her. This is a genuinely sweet scene between them. Mona decides to write nice little messages on the back of each recipe card. She says, and I quote, We don't know what life will bring, so on your birthday or any day you need it, you'll know your mother loved you and you have reasons to love yourself. Homer internalizes part of this message as love equals food. Huh. Anyway, after Mona leaves, things take a dark turn. Abe gets drunk, takes the recipe box while Homer sleeps, and angrily throws it off a cliff, along with all of her other possessions. He tells Homer the following morning that Mona took the recipes with her when she left. Yeah, Grandpa sucks. However, in the end, Homer forgives Grandpa, acknowledging that he was there for him after Mona left. The recipes ended up floating down to a diner, and Homer reclaims his lost messages from his mother. As a final parting shot, Mona calls Abe a mean SOB. But this time, Homer shields Grandpa from any unpleasant truths. Mona Simpson's final appearance, at least as of this video's production, was in season 31's Todd, Todd, Why Has Thou Forsaken Me? Todd Flanders has a crisis of faith due to the death of Maude. In a very clever bit of continuity, this leads to a bonding moment between Homer and Todd. Both of them can relate to losing their mother at a young age. We get yet another flashback of little Homer listening to his parents scream at each other. We get a couple new details here. First, that she only married Abe to piss off her parents. And secondly, she says, Tell the kid I love him, but I'm as bad at goodbyes as I am at picking husbands. This line is kind of weird, since she did go out of her way to say goodbye to him. Given their closeness, I don't think Mona would flippantly talk about her son that way. I think the narrative point they're making here is that, from Homer's point of view, he never got the chance to say goodbye to her. Later in the episode, Homer and Ned end up in a coma. Ned meets up with Maude in heaven, and Homer reunites with Mona. Mona comforts him, telling him they finally have a chance to say goodbye to each other. They hug, and Homer says that's all he ever wanted. Okay. So here's the thing. It should be pretty clear by now that Homer didn't have the happiest childhood ever or anything. The earlier seasons tried to shield Homer from this dynamic, make him mostly unaware of everything, and not holding a ton of resentment as an adult. The later seasons took it in a different direction. They basically said, no, his parents fought constantly and it did take a toll on him. The show never shied away from the fact that Mona and Abe weren't a great match for each other. Maybe they would have stayed together for Homer, but it's very likely this was heading toward divorce. 
The lack of closure or resolution for any of this is the most heartbreaking part of the Mona Simpson story. Mona and Homer loved each other very much. She seemed to be the one person who truly believed in him. But the world just didn't let them be happy together. Whether it be because of the justice system, bad luck, or emotions getting in the way. They just couldn't seem to get everything to line up properly. What I really like about Mona Simpson's characterization is that she always tried to do her best for people. Whether it's going out there and trying to make the world a better place, or even helping Mr. Burns when he gets trampled. She's always thinking of Homer's feelings, telling him that it's not his fault when he ruins the moment, or if he's mad at her, saying she understands and that things take time. Mona was very conscious of her own mistakes in life, and tried to stop history from repeating itself. Whether she succeeded is a separate argument, but I can think of a lot of timelines that end up much worse for Homer Simpson. Honestly, this whole discussion makes me appreciate Marge more for being such a stabilizing influence in his life. Let me know in the comments what you think of Mona Simpson's role in this series and your favorite moments of her. Sorry for such a melancholy video this time. I underestimated what watching all these in a row would be like. We should remember though, this story is sad, but it's spread across over 600 episodes. The Simpsons obviously isn't Bojack Horseman or anything, even if Homer did get the view from halfway down. Also, this ended up being a bonus episode of Simpsons Histories, so all those existing suggestions are going to be factored in for the next one. Right now, seeing a lot of momentum between Mr. Burns, Smithers, and Groundskeeper Willie, among others. Let me know who you would like to see next. As always, thanks for watching.